Every couple of weeks, I walk into my local barbershop and sit down and get a haircut. And sometimes, while I'm sitting in the chair getting my usual temp fade, my barber will try to give me relationship advice. I don't know why, because I don't have a girlfriend, nor do I ever ask. But you know the advice is gonna be good when it starts off with, let me tell you something about women because it wouldn't be a barber shop without some casual sexism. But listening to my barber tell me how I should treat women reminds me that no matter how smart you are, a lot of people lack emotional intelligence. And I'll be honest, before I went to college, I didn't even know what emotional intelligence was. I thought it was fake, like JJK leaks or British people's accents. But I actually learned that being emotionally intelligent is cool and that as a guy, being in touch with your emotions is a good thing and it's not gay. Women actually really like when a guy is emotionally intelligent and can communicate what he's feeling in a healthy way. That being said, I wanted to start this channel off by sharing some things I learned when it comes to being emotionally intelligent. Not because I'm a therapist, but because all of my opinions are objectively correct. So going back to my barber, remember when I said he was like, let me tell you something about women. Now what followed this was what I like to call man science. And unlike real science that involves research and experimentation and analysis, man science doesn't require any of that. Man science is more like when your boy tells you, yeah, bro, the reason I can't get any girls is because I don't have a positive canthal tilt, when really it's because he's immortal and valorant and doesn't shower. And what my barber said was, women are emotional. They think with emotion. But men, we're logical. We think with our brains. Yeah, that is false. Walk into any barbershop and say, I think LeBron is better than Jordan, and you will see how emotional men can get. The first step to being more emotionally intelligent is to understand that you have emotions. You're not a robot that only listens to logic and objectives. You're a human being with feelings. You get happy, you get sad, you get angry, you get anxious. Pretending that you don't have feelings just makes you more vulnerable to letting them control you. That's why we got so many dudes crashing out these days. A lot of guys don't know how to process their emotions, so they just default to anger. You ever see a dude trip in public and he gets up all angry like, Oh, what's so funny? He's not actually mad. Bro's just embarrassed. No matter how much you try to suppress them, you can't stop yourself from having feelings. So the first step is to acknowledge that. Now, while we're talking about logic versus emotions, one thing all emotionally intelligent people are is empathetic. And a lot of people struggle with empathy. And I get that. Like people go through some crazy stuff in life. How can I empathize with your trauma when the worst thing that ever happened to me was getting cooked for wearing fake polo in the sixth grade? But the easiest way to be more empathetic is to never approach an emotional reaction with a logical response. What does that mean? Imagine your boy just got dumped by his girl. We've all fumbled a baddie before. Yes, I have. But naturally, he's gonna be pretty torn up about it. Losing someone you care about is always sad. Logically, there's no reason to be sad because there are other girls out there. But you can empathize with the fact that he had feelings for this one girl in particular. He's not upset because he's not thinking. He's upset because it's just a sad situation. Approaching an emotional situation like it's a math problem is one of the most swagless things you could do. Like just because someone is reacting emotionally doesn't mean that they suddenly lost the ability to think logically. It's like, oh man, it rained and I got my favorite shirt wet. And then you go, well, next time you should bring an umbrella. What if I hit you in the ribs with a sledgehammer? Sometimes when people are coming to you with a problem, they aren't looking for a solution. They're looking for validation. When your Uber driver starts oversharing after you get in the car and ask him, hey man, how's it going? He wants you to say, yeah man, that does suck that your wife told you she wanted a divorce this morning and that she's probably cheating on you with Kevin from work. But if it makes you feel any better, if I was your wife, I'd never cheat on you. You can just drop me off up here at the curb, by the way. Now we all have things we're insecure about. Height, weight, having too much swag. But a big part of being emotionally intelligent is learning to manage your insecurities. Because ultimately, your insecurities are a you problem, and you can't make them everyone else's problem. You see, when not dealt with properly, insecurities don't just go away. Instead, one of two things happen. You either A, let it completely consume you, or B, start projecting. With the first option, your insecurity gets so bad that it becomes the only thing you see about yourself. You go from, ah oh, man, I kinda got a big nose, to now when you look in the mirror, you just see Wario. Or with option B, you just start pointing out what you hate about yourself and other people. <laughs> Bro, look at that guy wearing a pink shirt. Isn't that so weird? Like, who wears pink shirts? I'd never wear something like that. Bro, aren't you wearing a pink shirt right now? 
What? what? No, th this is fuchsia, bro. You need to learn your colors. We all have insecurities. That's just a part of being human, but that's something you have to deal with. For example, a lot of guys are insecure about their height. And I'm 5'8", and some people might consider that short. But then I realized that God made me 5'8", because he knew that if I could dunk, I'd be too powerful. And they'd be talking about me on ESPN instead of LeBron James. So, it's all about perspective. Now this next part might be controversial, but I personally don't think you can control your emotions. What I do think we can control though, is our response. Imagine if I walked up to you right now and just slapped you. You're probably gonna be pissed. And I don't think a world exists where you wouldn't be pissed if someone slapped you for no reason. That's a very natural response. How you feel isn't what matters, it's about what you do. Because before we act, we have to think. And before we think, we have to feel. Imagine if your girl was texting some dude from her job that you've never met. On Twitter, they might call you insecure for caring about this, but you know that every time you see Dave from work pop up on her phone, it makes your stomach hurt. Now, does this mean that you should confront her and accuse her of cheating and demand to go through her phone? No, that's called crashing out. But if it does bother you, just ask about it and have a mature conversation. Maybe even talk to Dave yourself so you can tell him that if he ever calls your girl past 8 p.m. again, it'll be the last conversation he ever has, you know? You could do it that way. The last thing I wanna say is that feelings matter. And people always say that it's important that we validate our emotions, but people seem to think that this only applies to certain feelings like being happy or being sad. But I mean we need to validate all of our emotions. We don't just alternate between being happy and being sad. We get angry, we get jealous, we get frustrated. But these are emotions that we're not supposed to feel, especially this one. Jealous? You want some toast? Cause you're looking real jelly right now, bro. But the thing is, these negative emotions like anger and jealousy are often some of our most genuine feelings. If you and your best friend both applied for something and they got it but you didn't, you're probably gonna be a little jealous. And that's fine. You wanted it just as bad as they did, and jealousy is an emotion we can all understand. You can't even hide it because if the opposite were true and they were in your shoes, they'd be jealous as shit too. Your feelings matter because they're fundamental in all of our relationships. And being emotionally intelligent isn't pretending that these feelings don't exist, it's recognizing that they do and controlling how you respond to them. And that's for both your own and other people's emotions. Look, there are a lot of crazy people out there who don't know how to control their emotions. Crash outs, as I like to call them. And you don't want to be a crash out. And the best ways to avoid that are by being emotionally intelligent and following me on Twitter at underscore suburban will. Thanks for watching the video. Peace.